When I see an Alfa Romeo go by, I tip my hat, said Henry Ford. And the Milanese mark has been engendering respect, inspiration, passion, and, for some of its owners, weary resignation for decades. Indeed, the company marked 110 years of manufacturing in 2020, a celebration which was understandably muted. That, of course, means there are a surfeit of models to choose from, and some glaring omissions such as the 33 Stradale, Alfetta and Montreal, which we have covered elsewhere. But here is our list of cars which every Alfisti should know and love. And if you do enjoy this video, please do remember to give it a like and subscribe to the channel for more from Goodwood Road and Racing. Not quite the car which started it all, but the first to carry the full Alfa Romeo name. The original Anonima Lombardo Fabrica Automobili, set up in the old Dirac factory in Milan in 1910, was taken over by entrepreneur Nicola Romeo in 1915, who added his surname to the brand. The 20-30 HP the company was making at the time was an update of the very first Alfa, the 24 horsepower before production was halted due to the First World War. Upon its resumption in 1920, the standard model was joined by the Alfa Romeo 2030 ES. The S stood for Sport, signifying the car's sleek torpedo body and larger 4.2-litre straight-four engine, producing 67 horsepower. Intended for the rich, the 2030 ES was three times the price of a Ford Model T, and gave Enzo Ferrari his start in motor racing alongside Alberto Ascari. The 1750 designation has been used on a number of Alfa Romeos right up to the present day, usually signifying not just engine size, but some measure of sporting intent separating it from the lesser models. The originator was the second generation of the 6C series cars built between 1927 and 1954, and which could probably fill a list on their own. The 6C took as its starting point the hugely successful Alfa Romeo P2 Grand Prix car, but due to changing regulations, ditched its 2-litre straight 8 in favour of a 1.5-litre straight 6, hence the 6C name. Two years later, the larger capacity 1752cc engine was introduced in the 6C1750, which promptly won the Belgian, Spanish, Tunisian and Monza Grand Prix, the Mille Emilia, Brooklyn's Double Twelve and the Ulster TT. Road cars were bodied by Zagato, touring Superleggera and James Young of Britain, and were available in compressori or supercharged guise. Like its sister car, the 8C was named after its cylinder count, in this case referring to the Vittorio Jano designed straight 8, an evolution of the one in the P2 Grand Prix car. Now with two four-cylinder integral block and head castings rather than four two-cylinder ones, the engine was initially offered in 2.3 litre capacity with supercharging. Intended for racing, the 8C engine is the one which created the Alfa Romeo competition legend in both Grand Prix and sports car racing. It won the Le Mans 24 hours for four straight years beginning in 1931 and was the engine which powered the world's first single-seat Grand Prix car, the Monoposto Tipo B, which won the 1932 season. Listing all the 8C's competition victories would require a separate video, and Alfa Romeo originally insisted that the car would be for racing only. However, the company almost immediately relented, and released it in either Lungo long, or Corto short, chassis forms to be clothed by legendary Italian carrozzeria as well as coach builders in France, Switzerland and the UK. The 2300 was followed by the even rarer but equally successful 8C2900 in 1935. In the post-war rebuilding, the need for volume sales saw Alfa Romeo reposition itself away from the coach-built, highly exclusive end of the market with the 1900. The company's first true production design, it was also the first to be offered in left-hand drive. It had been the practice of sporting Italian marks to produce their cars in right-hand drive, 
because it allowed the driver to better place the car on tight, mountainous roads. Taking its name from its 1.9-litre twin-cam engine, the 1900 was available with a five-speed gearbox and independent front suspension. Alpha advertised it as the family car that wins races, thanks to its successes in the Targa Florio and Stella Alpina. Although it was a monocoque design, Alfa Romeo's general manager, Eugenio Alessio, was concerned that this new form of engineering would cripple the Italian carrozzerias. So, the chassis was designed to be rebodied, and offerings were produced by Touring, Zagato, Pininfarina, Buono, Gia, and Vignale. Most famously, Batone used it as the basis for the BAT series of aerodynamic research concepts. The Italian love of small sporting saloons and coupés could be said to have its roots with the first cars to wear the Giulietta name badge. Smaller than the 1900 series, the Giulietta range included a saloon, coupé, estate and spider, all powered by the first iteration of the famed Alfa Romeo twin cam. Designed by Giuseppe Busso, this advanced all-alloy engine first appeared in 1.3-litre displacement and would be produced for 30 years. The first of the family to be released in 1954 was the 2 plus 2 Sprint Coupé, designed and built by Batone, followed in 1955 by the four-door Berliner and convertible Spider. A rare coach-built estate version was dubbed the Giulietta Promiscua. We'll leave you to puzzle on that etymology. A low-volume homologation variant, the 1955 Sprint Speciale, was penned by Franco Scaglione, and the first 100, in low-nose format, had a drag coefficient of just 0.28. Having successfully brought the Alfa Romeo name to the attention of a larger audience, a flagship was needed. Enter the 2600. The 2600 used a brand new all-alloy 2.6-litre straight six. The last time that legendary configuration would appear in an Alfa Romeo. Launched first as a saloon with factory bodywork, it was quickly followed by a touring design convertible, the Spider, and a Batoni Coupe, the Sprint. Apart from the engine, the running gear was derived from the 1900, and, by now outdated, the Berliner Saloon did not win many plaudits. However, the handsome Sprint and stylish Spider were more popular as upmarket Grand Tourers and the former was used by the Carabinieri as high-speed pursuit cars to counter a spate of armed robberies in 1960s Italy. You only have to look at the stunningly handsome spider to know it deserves its place among the Alfa Romeo greats. Introduced in 1963, the Giulia Sprint GT was based on a shortened floor plan from the newly introduced Giulia Compact Executive Saloon. In one of his earliest works for Batone, the coupé was styled by Giorgetto Giugiaro and was groundbreaking for the way in which the glazing dictated the size and shape of the cabin and how the headlights were incorporated into the grille. Fitted with the now established twin cam, the model also came as standard with a five-speed manual transmission and all-round disc brakes, both still a rarity in the early 1960s. On sale in various updated forms for 14 years, it was the GTA model which cemented the car's status. A racing special, the A stood for Allegerita, Italian for lightened. The car's steel panels were replaced with aluminium, and a number of the all-alloy engine's components were replaced with even lighter weight magnesium. The engine itself, in 1.6-litre displacement, received a twin-spark cylinder head and large Weber carburettors. Although supplied like this from factory, many owners took their cars to Auto Delta, the race prep outfit which was, by then, wholly owned by Alfa Romeo. Auto Delta later developed the wide-arched, fuel-injected GTM model. Based on the same Julia mechanicals as the aforementioned Sprint GT, the Spider was designed and built by Pininfarina as a rakish two-seater convertible. Known as the boat tail spider to differentiate it from the later square-backed cam tail spiders, the car was one of the first to be designed with rudimentary crumple zones. Launched in 1966, Alfa Romeo staged a nationwide competition to choose a new name for the car, 
with the winning entry being Duetto, or Duet, proposed by Giordobaldo Trionfi of Brescia. Unfortunately, trademark issues meant the car had to be sold as the Spider 1600, although the Duetto name is still widely used. The Spider proved enduringly popular. Receiving evolutionary upgrades through four different series, it remained on sale until 1993. Remember big posh saloon cars? They were a thing for a long time before the world went SUV mad. In 1978, Alfa Romeo and Lancia joined their by now parent company Fiat and, for some reason, Saab, in agreeing to jointly develop a front wheel drive platform to compete in the sector. Known as the Type 4 platform, it underpinned the Fiat Chroma, Lancia Thema, Saab 9000 and Alfa Romeo 164. Although the Saab and Lancia were handsome, the 164's Pininfarina styling was undoubtedly the pick of the bunch, and it could be had with the now legendary Busso V6 engine. Turned sideways for the front wheel drive application, the engine also gained the chromed inlet pipes, which still attract intakes of breath whenever the bonnet is lifted. The top of the range Quadrifoglio Verde model received a 24 valve version of the engine in 1992, and a four wheel drive Q4 was offered from 1993 onwards to help tame some of the torque steer. Long before Ducati appropriated the name, the Alfa Romeo SZ was known colloquially as Il Mostro, or Monster, for its in-your-face styling. Often wrongly attributed to Zagato, the car's initials mean sprint Zagato, the Carrozzeria was responsible for building, not styling, the car. It was a collaboration between the Fiat and Alfa Romeo in-house design studios, and most of the sketches are signed by Antonio Castellana a junior Fiat stylist. The car was one of the first designed using the digital CAD-CAM process, and if you can remember 1980s computer graphics, that may help to explain its sharp edges and flat surfaces. Intended to recall Alfa Romeo's racing heritage, which by now was somewhat of a fading memory, the SZ was mechanically based on the Alfa Romeo 75 saloon. A Busso V6 drove the rear wheels, with touring car-derived suspension fettled by Giorgio Pianta, Fiat, and Lancia Rally crew chief. The car is capable of 1.4G in cornering. Strictly limited edition, just over 1,000 were built, followed up by a convertible version, the RZ, of which 278 were made. Another Alfa Romeo built to celebrate the company's racing heritage. The 2007 8C Competizione was styled a great deal more traditionally by Wolfgang Egger of Centro Stile Alfa Romeo. Its name, slightly confusingly, is meant to reference the 6C Competizione model, in which one Manuel Fangio competed in the Milia Milia, and which later won the Targa Florio. The 8 in the modern car's name refers to the 450 horsepower, 4.7 litre Ferrari built V8 under its shapely nose, giving it a top speed approaching 190 miles an hour. Other components were shared with fellow Fiat Group firm Maserati, and both the Coupe and Spider versions were limited to just 500 each. Like the cars which it harks back to, the Carrozzeria got their hands on the car, with Zagato producing a one-off Alfa Romeo TZ3 Corsa for a German collector, and Touring designing a modern version of their legendary Disco Volante for limited series production. We are, unsurprisingly, massive fans of the modern day Julia here at GRNR. It certainly does justice to a legendary lineup of sporting saloons, a breed we fear is under threat of extinction. The first production rear wheel drive Alfa Romeo saloon since the 75 went out of production in 1992, the Julia proudly takes the fight to the established German, British and American players and wins. That is, in no small part, due to its twin turbocharged 2.9 litre V6, developed by Ferrari and producing 510 horsepower, helping the Quadrifoglio set the saloon car lap record at the Nürburgring Nordschleife. To celebrate Alfa Romeo's 110 years, the company has also created a new GTA and GTM based on the Giulia Quadrifoglio, 
following everyone's favorite formula of less weight and more power. That is our list of our favorite Alfa Romeo cars of all time. But what have we got wrong and what have we missed out? Let us know in the comments below.